We are back with our ranking series. Two weeks ago, we did uh, quarterbacks. Then we did running backs last week. And naturally, we're pivoting to wide receivers. Um, so between the three of us and possibly one other, if she joins once again, I want to say that this was the most challenging exercise that I've done for the rankings. And it's because it really put in perspective uh, how many good wide receivers there are. For example, if I was talking to a fan of the Colts and they said, uh, what are your feelings on T.Y. Hilton? I'd probably say, well, yeah, he's damn good, probably top 20 or so. But when you start plotting these rankings, I found that he's nowhere really near the top 20. So I think the, you'll hear a guy's name, and because you know he catches five, six, seven touchdowns, puts up 1,000 yards, you're like, oh, yeah, he's a top 20 guy. But I learned that that's kind of just a starter kit um, to be considered good. The top 15 is really an elitist class is what I found. So we will go through our round robin of our top 15 wide receivers heading into 2021. That is our criteria. Wes, do you want to kick us off at number 15? Sure. Number 15, I have Keenan Allen for the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Allen is an ultra reliable route technician. Uh, he's not the fastest, but he finds a way to get open. Uh, last year, he saw uh, shallower routes, um, which um, he counted for more receptions that way, but I, I think they, they ran them shallow, shallower routes uh, because of the protection around Justin Herbert. With the added protection, um, I expect that um, route depth to expand. Jason, number 15 for you, sir. Yeah, so number 15, I got I got Jerry Judy actually coming in. I expect a I expect a breakout year for him. Um I know last year he he showed up pretty good for a rookie, I think. Um I you know, being a Broncos fan, I was able to watch him every game. Had a, had a bad bad problem dropping balls. Um showed up against Keenan Allen and the Chargers. I think he dropped like 7 or 8. Um but if he can clean that up, his route running is simply simply amazing and obviously a lot of it's going to depend on the quarterback play what they can get out of either drew or teddy whoever it may be um but you know i think i expect i expect him to break out and having having Cortland back um to take some of the heat away i think is gonna is gonna catapult him i debated putting him even higher what does that do for tim patrick does he go quietly back to a wr3 you know gosh that's that's a good question i you know with there were so many rumblings of, uh, you know, the, the Rogers and the, and the Watson thing, you know, you bring in one, a guy like that, they all get fed. I think equally similar to what Peyton did with the weapons he had from 2012 to 2014. But, you know, now, um, you know, with Cortland coming back from injury, it'll be interesting to see if he can go hundred percent all the time. Um, but having Tim Patrick or, a you know, poor man's Cortland Sutton in essence, Mm -hmm. um there yeah i think he 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 will get moved to to wide receiver three okay fair enough um i also have keenan allen i have a tremendous amount of respect for him particularly his route running i think he's benefited a lot from philip rivers who retired but philip rivers whether you like or dislike him <laughs> uh he's kind of a sour puss uh he was a consistent performer um he never really gets savaged at least in my circles for not reaching a Super Bowl. He's immune to that, uh, but he had a tremendous career, steady career, uh, one that he probably wishes he could have broke through just once, but I think uh, he and Allen were a beautiful pairing, and so now Allen just transitions into a young, fascinating rookie of the year type, um, and it was hard to put Allen any deeper than 15, so that is who I nominated for that position. I will take over at number 14 and go with Adam Thielen from the Vikings. He, over the last two years, because of injury and then the emergence of Justin Jefferson, his yards production has dipped. He was at his best in 2018, Cousins' first year in Minnesota. He had his career year there, probably will end up being his career year. And then 2017 was pretty damn good the year before with Case Keenum. But what he has folded into his game <clears throat> after the yards have kind of dipped is the touchdowns. Uh, he caught 14 touchdowns last year, which, my goodness, is a huge chunk, especially when you have an emergent uh, Jefferson on the other side. And the year before that in 2019, before he got hurt, he was on a clip to hit about 10, 11, 12 touchdowns. So I think fortuitously for him, 
as maybe some of his yardage is being usurped in a run first offense by Justin Jefferson, he's finding the end zone. He's captain reliability with his hands and his route running as well. So I have Thielen at number 14. Wes, who do you have? 14 for me, I have uh, Scary Terry uh, McLaurin from the Washington football team. Uh, he's a speedster, um, not great size, but he's shifty. Uh, should do well with the uh, Fitzpatrick and that quarterback um, who likes to sling it. Um, and then just the general better offensive weapons around him this year. 14 for Jason. Um, yeah. So this guy probably could have gone a little higher, maybe, um, you know, I didn't have the privilege of watching a whole heck of a lot of him, but he was constantly uh, atop the, atop the stat boards every week. Um, s- surprisingly, um, and putrid quarterback play, really. Um, but I like uh, Robinson, Allen Robinson at 14. I think, you know, I mean, he, he, I mean, depending on, you know, what do they got? They're rolling with Dalton there, huh? For now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, you know, I, it, who's, who's competent, right? I mean, he's, he's got to be more competent than what they've had in years past or a little bit more consistent anyway, but you never know that, that that could open up the pathway to fields. And if he turns out, you know, and even if they don't really, right. I mean, Robinson can still, pr- pr- he's proven that he can produce regardless of who's throwing him the ball. Yeah. That's a tremendous feather in his cap because seriously, look at, look at his quarterbacks over his career. It's, it's a farce. Uh, compared to his talent. Wes, what do you have at 13? Uh, 13, Chris Godwin from the Buccaneers. Um, He's a slot maven, had a down year after a breakout in 2019. A lot of that, you know, bringing Brady in, there was a lot of miles to be fed on that offense. Uh, Also, some some of that was due to injuries as well. Um, I anticipate he'll have a a comeback year, a bounce-back year this year. Um, we'll hopefully be healthy and, and go from there. I also have Godwin at 13, and I cannot dispute a thing that you say. Uh, he's uh, impressively established himself alongside Mike Evans. And I know a lot of attention gets freed up to Mike Evans, who you will hear about later on this list, foreshadowing. Uh, but yeah, I commend him because it would be easy to get lost in the shuffle, kind of like folks do behind Devonte Adams in Green Bay. He's such a, a showstopper that Alan Lazard feels like a footnote. And so does uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, but that Godwin doesn't allow that to help happen to himself, even with Jameis Winston as quarterback. So this isn't just a Brady only thing. So Godwin is my 13. Jason, who's yours? 13. I got Thielen. Uh, okay. And I can, I don't really have a whole lot more to add than what you, uh, what you, uh, mentioned a a few few minutes ago i mean he's he's just a constant you know god he's just a great dude to have on on your uh on your team i mean i you know bring it in jeffrey yeah i don't have anything more no more to add than what you what you mentioned you guys know what i'm talking about being oh yeah the funny thing the funny thing about Thielen is when he started to uh, to come up maybe Wes, you felt this way i kept waiting it for it to be a mirage like yeah the game that he really broke out in 2015, he had a bunch of garbage time yards against the Packers when we got slaughtered there. And I was like, I was like, cool. He got his, that'll be his career game. And then it took me about maybe eight weeks the following season. I kept thinking like, is this, is he really going to be good? (laughs) And then eventually he just was. So uh, yeah, he's really, he really uh, established his own legacy. And in that same vein, on the next spot on my list is another Viking, Justin Jefferson, at number 12. <laughs> now, I can tell you, based on the eye test of what I watched, uh, he probably deserves to be a lot higher on this list, but he's only been doing it for one year. Conceivably, any rookie from the 2020 class could have a sophomore slump. I don't think that will happen to Jefferson, but I think it would be a little strange for me to put him in the top 10 when I've only seen one year. But what I can tell you, and this is from a dude who watches every single ounce of Vikings football, is that when the football is in the air, I have the same comfort level that I did with Stefan Diggs as I do with Justin Jefferson. And it only took me about two weeks to establish that. And I don't know outside of Randy Moss that I've ever felt that way uh, about a Vikings rookie wide receiver where I'm just spellbound and I'm like, good God, he's going to catch this. So he's already usurped what I expected and then some, and then in terms of my emotional comfort level, when the ball is in the air, just as I felt confident with Diggs, I feel the exact same way about Jefferson. Who's your number 12, Wes? Uh, my number 12 is Calvin Ridley with the Falcons. 
Uh, he was seventh in targets in 2020, uh, led the league in 15 plus yard receptions with 40. Um, he's extremely effective attacking all levels of the field. And now he doesn't have Julio Jones lining up across from him. So he is the guy. And um, I think having Kyle Pitts on, on the team as well as a dynamic tight end will help keep the field open for him. Who is your number 12, Jason? I also have uh, Ridley there. And, uh, you know, like you said, Wes, you, you, taking Julio away from the equation in certain circumstances, you, you, one would think would actually hurt, right. uh, you know, Ridley. And one could even say that's the only reason Ridley is as good as he is, is because of the, the attention that, that Jones commands. But if you're looking at it through that lens, then you could say, well, that same attention needs to be focused toward pits yep. and free up the free up the field. So yeah, I got, uh, I got Ridley. He's, he's, you know, he's going to be, he's going to be just as good. I think as he was last year, I don't think the absence of Julio will neither hurt nor, you know, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty consistent to what we saw last year. So he was your number 12 Ridley Ridley. Yep. Okay. Uh, 11 Wes. 11. I have Michael Thomas. Uh, which probably might surprise a few people that he's this low on the list, but there are some uh, very good wide receivers ahead of him as well. Uh, Michael Thomas, the slant God. Um, I know he gets called uh, other, other names with, uh, regarding the slant, but uh, he is the slant master, uh, good possession receiver. Uh, he'll play with Hall of Famer Drew Brees, uh, for the first time in his career this year. Uh, so we shall see um, what kind of production he brings. Number 11, I have Allen Robinson. And based on what Jason said about five minutes ago, with a normal menu of quarterbacks throughout his career. So, you know, somewhere in that average to good, like maybe Sam Bradford from his prime or even Dalton from his prime. I, I, I shudder to think how good Robinson could be, but I mean, he's had Bortles, the rest of that uh, Jacksonville atrocity. And then, <laughs> then he went to the bears and it's been, you know, with their experiment with Trubisky and it's going to be Dalton. And then for their sake, if it's fields, then boom, though, the waiting game will have paid off. Uh, but everywhere he goes, some of it's garbage time with Jacksonville. He gets his, his, his earrings his keep and it's remarkable. So uh, I had to put him at 11, Jason. Hey, well, hey, you weren't referencing that year that Bortles had 35 touchdowns, mm -hmm. yeah. 17 picks, were you? Man, I'd yeah. kill for a season like that from a Broncos <laughs> quarterback. Um, number 11, I got God, uh, Chris Godwin. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, I mean, he, he who, who, who had him earlier in the list? Was that you, Wes? I did, yeah. We, we uh, both 13. Did. Oh, yeah, yeah, you guys already both, both had him. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any really much more to add. I mean, those two receivers they got in, in Tampa are both made my list. I'll just uh, I'll just uh, reveal that now. Um, it's, it was really hard for me to to pick which one was going to go ahead of the other. So I, I basically had to put the 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 taller guy <laughs> higher. I like those tall receivers. Yeah, he's always liked those tall. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can remember him being mesmerized with that with that type for the longest time. So I had I have the weirdest criteria for putting these rankings together, and Wes, you'll probably think I'm an imbecile, uh, but because I know the Green Bay Packers so well from watching them twice per year, and you know, fearing them when we go to their house, and you know, having that respect for what Rodgers can do, the best way for me to rank these players was to pretend foremost that Devontae Adams doesn't play there, pretend that Rodgers still does, and then take whoever the wide receiver is that I'm evaluating and put him on that team. And who would I have more comfort with? So, for example, Michael Thomas with Aaron Rodgers, how good would he be? Jerry Judy with Aaron Rodgers, how good would he be? So that was my litmus test was how good would he be against the Packers? How much would I fear that tandem as a, a Vikings uh, eternalist? Uh, so that's, that's how I did this, and that's why it was so tricky. So I will say that after the guy I'm about to name at number 10, I think, I think we're up to 10, then the 9 through 1 was incredibly difficult. I got through 15 through 10 relatively easily. I use emphasize relatively, but I went with Michael Thomas at number 10. Um, this last year at this time, he would have been in the top three uh, because of how steady he is. 
And I know he, he does catch flack for the slants, but he still makes a living doing that. And who can fault him for that if he is uh, that robust with his skill set? So it'll be, uh, it'll be a pivotal year for him with Janus and Taysom and whoever they decide, Ian Book, uh, however things go. But he is damn good at what he does. And I don't think that he would just be garbage if, if they took the top off the defense and threw it to him. I just think that Breeze didn't have that skill set in the remaining years of his uh, career that they just kept it underneath. So in theory, if you paired Thomas with, uh, you know, somebody with a cannon arm, I don't think that he's just going to shut down. Uh, so that's why I will have him entering the top 10 at number 10. Wes, number 10 for you. Number 10 for me, uh, I go with a Vikings wide receiver. Uh, Adam Thielen for me did not crack my top 15. He's oh just on the cusp. Uh, instead, I have Justin Jefferson at number 10. Uh, he had the most 25 plus yard catches last year. Um, he's a second year pro, you know, this year looking to build on a rookie of the year uh, campaign. Obviously, he didn't get it, but in the heart of Vikings fans, he was the rookie of the year. Uh, so I will stick with that and um, look forward to seeing what he brings um, in his sophomore season. All right, Jason, since we've already stepped on some of the dudes that you had, you must have a unique top 10. Who, who's your number 10? You know, it is pretty <laughs> unique by all uh, normal standards. I, I do will tell you this, though. I don't have two guys in my top 10 that uh, that are probably going to shock some people. And uh, I don't right. know if my I don't know if my reasoning is any is uh, is any any good or not, but it doesn't really much matter. I got we're at, I got AJ Brown at 10. Um, and I, I actually think that this guy here is poised to have a huge, huge year, much kind of like what we were talking about just a second ago with the addition of Julio Jones. I don't, I mean, I, I think that might've been one of the best signings of the off season. Um, not just because, Oh, we're going to get Julio Jones, bring him in here and he's going to be so good. Like he was in Atlanta from 2015 to 2020. I don't, I, I don't, I think that's going to command a lot of it. I mean, AJ Brown was a stud before they got this guy. Now what are, what, what are defenses going to do against them? You know I mean? So that's going to be, you know, this guy, he, he could potentially God, he could potentially lead the league this year, in my opinion. Um, but um, for now, we'll, we'll stick them at 10. I mean, obviously, they're a run-heavy team, too, so that's got to factor into the equation a bit as well. But Wes at number nine. Uh, number nine for me, DK Metcalf from the Seahawks. Uh, drops are probably the only thing that's keeping him from being higher on this list. Um, he was second to Jefferson in 25-plus yard catches from last year. Um you would have hoped that Seattle would have um, surrounded Russell Wilson with a little bit better uh, line protection. Who knows? They, they might have, I, I think they added Rodney Hudson um, to prevent or to allow for Metcalf to get downfield. So um, I like what uh, is on the horizon for him in his third season. So. At number nine, I have AJ Brown. And I think the most remarkable thing about him in his first two, two or three years is his run after the catch. Uh, Tannehill is not known for being a rocket launcher, not, not to say he can't throw the ball downfield, but AJ Brown takes those mid range 20 yard passes and rips them into 60 yard gains. Uh, so AJ Brown is my number nine. Who is yours, Jason? Yeah, my number nine, I got, I got Justin Jefferson coming in. Uh, for all the reasons you guys have already alluded to. I mean, I, I think I, I he's, he really, really impressed me. Um, watched him a couple times, kind of the same way I did Thielen, um, you know, paying attention to fantasy teams I was up against. And, you know, he came up, he came up big and in, in big moments. And it, it, the moment never really seemed too big for that guy. He, I mean, he didn't seem like a rookie at all. Um, clutch comparable. Like you, I've heard you say it, Dustin before. I mean, very comparable to, to Moss in 98. I mean, this dude, and, you know, he was like number – what a – another – you're talking about last week when we were talking about the steal they got in Cook. Jefferson mm -hmm. was another. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, good for them. Uh, we at number eight, Wes. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. 
I have, uh, let's see, who did I put here? Number eight, DK Metcalf. Um, he'll probably be at the top of this list in the next two years or so, so long as he stays paired with Russell. And Tyler Lockett does a lot of damage, but he just isn't as flashy. And I feel bad for him because uh, in some capacities, he produces just as much as Metcalf. Metcalf is younger and stronger and faster, and he gets the kudos. And I'm, I even fall for the bait. Um, but uh, Metcalf has to be in the top 10, and I think eight is the proper spot for him right now. Who's your number eight, Wes? Uh, for me, number eight is Mike Evans. Uh, he was also injured for a portion of 2020, much like Godwin. Uh, he still had the 11th most 15 plus yard receptions. Uh, surprisingly, only two wide receivers out snapped him uh, as a total, uh, even accounting for, you know, the games that he missed. So um, if he's healthy, he's out there and he's playing. Uh, yeah. Who do you got at eight, Jace? I also have Evans there at eight. Um, yeah, I think that tandem there and in, in uh, <clears throat> Tampa is going to be going to be huge. I mean, you know, you can avoid and get by without those injuries. Um, and I didn't realize how, you know, those guys. How many games were both of those guys out for last year? Because I remember like last week, I was I think I mentioned that the Tampa Bay kind of skated by fairly good without the injury bug but i suppose if you just remove one of those guys at a time you can still be very very good yes uh, i want to say that each of them missed three or four games um yeah so they the did season. yeah so they did miss significant time but still both just dominant forces really i mean like dustin you mentioned i mean good with or without brady i mean yeah yeah that's the impressive thing is that brady just used them more diligently for wins and Jameis used them for just mass production that didn't really result in wins. <laughs> uh, so Evans played all 16 games last year and Godwin missed 12. So that's probably why he led the league in snaps or whatever stat that you had. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then, then you just have Gronk and Antonio Brown on the back end filling things out, which, right, yeah. yeah, which is a it's embarrassment of riches. Um, my number seven is Kenny Galladay, who's transitioned to the New York Giants. So I've said on this show and on the Vikings podcast before that while watching Detroit Lions games against the Vikings, that I never once in my life feared Matthew Stafford. Like I, I do fear Rodgers. I do, I do feel fear Wilson and the Vikings never played Mahomes, but I would fear him. But I never felt that way about Stafford. But I did feel that way about Galladay. That's how, that's how weird it is. Uh, he's so dynamic. And I heard uh, one of my coworkers, who's a fantasy football head, told me, and Wes, you'll have to tell me if this is wrong, that Galladay is like 20th on the board for fantasy wide receivers. And that I is, would believe it. And they yeah. must just think it's not going to click with Jones or Slayton's going to hog a lot of that. But, he is uh, coming off of uh, injury plague 2020. Um, I think he maybe played two or three games. I, yeah. I remember I, I traded you for him, and then he just <laughs> sat on the bench yeah. sucking up space. That was like the highlight of my, my <laughs> fantasy year in that league, anyhow, was keeping it alive with that move. Uh, but, yeah, so I think that uh, – I think the Giants offense will, will click more so than the fantasy, fantasy projections are. So that is a tidbit to any fantasy listeners, which I'm sure there are. Uh, you can probably get Galladay lower than you would think, so snatch him up. Uh, and that brings us to Wes at number seven. Uh, number seven, this is where I have Julio Jones ranking. Okay. Um, big question mark on health. You know, can he stay healthy? Um, when he is healthy, he's argue, arguably one of the best to ever play the position. Uh, this stat I found was pretty amazing. He is averaging 95.5 yards a game over his career, which is ungodly just, yeah just insane um he is uh, you know 31 32 i believe so he's getting up there in age um but pairing him across from aj brown can only help aid his career who is next on your list jason at number seven okay fine i you know what i'm gonna i'm just gonna admit it i don't have that guy on my list at all Julio. So really? there's the surprise. There's the surprise <laughs> for you. And yep. one of the biggest stats um, 
persuading that decision for me was one of the things you mentioned, Wes, 32, going to be 33 years old. Um, you know, that I know history doesn't always repeat itself. Every player is different, this, this, and that, but that is old for a receiver. Um, you know, and I guess the two that I compare that to is, um, Demarius and, and, um, uh, Des, you know, they both seem to deteriorate and go downhill very quickly once they got about to 30, 31 years old. Um, I, I'm not saying that Julio is going to do that, right? I mean, Julio is a completely different kind of animal, but um, I'm not going to be surprised if it does. And I think that for the reasons I mentioned on my uh, list earlier about AJ, I think that it's going to be, while he's probably going to get thousand yards he probably will um but i think it's going to be more of the aj brown show in tennessee yeah if only to free him up you know via reputation and decoy yeah wes who's your six uh number six for me this is where i have Allen robinson uh he was tied for the most contested catches at 21 posted a one percent drop rate uh third amongst wide receivers uh, he finally has a quarterback. Uh, he probably won't see that quarterback for the first five or six weeks of the season. <laughs> um, but he's been productive with, you know, as we mentioned before, um, average quarterback play throughout his career. Um, I think if he finally has a quarterback in Justin Fields, um, you know, there's a good chance that he could wind up higher on this list next year. Okay. It, it- that's a good choice. I, you know, sorry to interrupt. I didn't even give you guys my seventh, did I? Yeah, I thought you did. Who was it? Because didn't I just go into oh, a yeah. rant about Julio? <laughs> oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so my my seventh is Keenan Allen. Uh, oh, I think uh, I think he's going to be uh, he's going to be stellar. Um, you know, ca- I think he caught over a hundred balls last year. One of the few to do it, um, and he missed a few games. So I mean, and I think Justin Herbert is I don't think I, I, I look at him and I watched him play. He's, he's got the tools. I don't see a sophomore slump for him. Um, I actually see a better season from him coming up. So give us us your six. Sorry about skipping you. Oh no, 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 no. I went into a tangent. (laughs) I mean, probably like, God, this, okay. Uh, so my number six, an anti Julio tangent. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Can't make this up. Uh, when we get since since when we get down to the end here, we'll see if you guys can pinpoint who I left off. That's not even the biggest surprise. Uh, I got Stefan Diggs at six. Uh, caption. You know, I, I it's 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 tough for me to. God, it, it, what him and Allen did last year is is just remarkable. And if they can recapture that, even. You know, I mean, I think Buffalo's got a well-rounded, well-oiled team there. What they've done there and built that thing over the last couple of years and then adding D- Diggs, who just seems to fit like a glove there. Um, you know, um, I, you know, I think, uh, well, for reasons you mentioned earlier about comparing him to, to Jefferson, that comfortable, mm-hmm. that comfortability level that, uh, that, you know, Allen just knows he, he's got him and yeah. Very impressed with what he did last year. Number six is where I also have Diggs. Um, And so I know a lot about him because he spent five years with the Vikings. And the only, if I don't have a tangible defense from not having him higher, other than I simply think the five guys ahead of him are better at this point in their career. And going along my, my test where Diggs and Rogers and Green Bay, and that's about it, five guys I'm about to name, I would be more fearful of them upcoming. Uh, not a slight to Diggs. I think six is company. I think last year when I did this just on my own, Diggs and Thielen were at 10 and 11 because they were so damn similar with their production with the Vikings. But uh, he scaled four spots from last offseason at this time, at least according to me. At number five, I have Mike Evans. And he teeters on most underrated player that I've ever seen, not because he slept on, but we just don't put him on t-shirts or commercials when every year he goes over 1100 yards and usually between seven and 11 touchdowns. And that's from his rookie year on, and he's never had a down campaign. 
And that's with the, the Jameis Winstons and all those dudes. And he is as reliable as it gets at a wide receiver. You can pencil him in for 1,100 yards like clockwork. And I would feel dastardly about myself if I didn't put him in the top five. Who is your number five, Wes? Uh, number five for me, this is where I have A.J. Brown. Okay. Um, he's a do-it-all wide receiver, uh, second coming of, of Julio. Now he gets to play with his idol, Julio. Um, in my opinion, he's the uh, best of the younger wide receiver bunch. Um, you know, the three years in the league or younger. Um, he will push for the number one spot this year uh, with Julio on the other side, with the attention paid to Derrick Henry. Um, I, if you're playing fantasy, he is probably one or two uh, for the year in where he finishes on wide receiver uh, points list. Jason, number five. This is where I have Cortland Sutton. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, I expect big, 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 big things from him. Um, and well, you know, but you guys have mentioned it and, you know, he hasn't been, he hasn't been reliable missing all but one game last year or two, you know, I mean, it's going to all depend on how well he can come back from injury, but the putrid quarterback play that this guy's had, um, you know, if they, if, if Drew can take that leap, or even if not, even if they have to roll with Teddy, who's uh, reliable, um, I think, I think uh, Judy did enough last year to command attention. I think Patrick did a lot enough last year to command attention. So I don't think teams will be able to, to double and triple Cortland like they once did. And um, if he could come back and he's healthy and he's rolling like he did pre-injury, um, I would expect a huge year from him as well. And he's got that height frame that I like. What is he, 6'3", <laughs> six, 6'4"? Six, yeah, he had that. So you'll know more than anybody on the planet. Drew, Rock, Drew Locke had that stretch in 2019 of about a month and a half where he, he was excellent, and Cortland was his go-to guy. And I think when I did these rankings on my couch last year during the lockdown, I think I had Cortland at number nine right before Diggs and Thielen because – he was trending that much up. So uh, I think I had him at, let's see, it wasn't too far down the list at 16. I had 16 and I had 17 at uh, Odell uh, Beckham. So <clears throat> he's not too far off, but I had to drop him just because he didn't play. Yeah. And it, it would be, to me, it would be unjust to disqualify the other dudes when I don't know what we're getting back from him. Um, right. And let's see, that puts you at <clears throat> number four, Wes. Am I correct? Number four. Uh, this is where I have Stefan Diggs. Um, he outsnapped every wide receiver with um, 1,137 snaps, uh, led the league in receptions, re reception yards, and reception yards per game. Uh, he's one of the best contested catchers. Uh, and, yeah, he, he really blossomed his, his one year in Buffalo. Um, he would always seemed to be trending up. Uh, well, on um, on the Vikings, and then, you know, this year or last year, I should say, he finally had the chance to be the guy, and um, you know, he proved it. He went out there and did the work, and and showed, you know, what it takes. And yeah, I I can't put him any lower on this list. You uh, you revealed a lot about your Viking fandom because uh, whatever position you said Thielen was at seventeen, eighteen, blah blah blah. Uh, now you have Diggs all the way up number four. And I'm willing to guess that last year at this time, you would have had them somewhat comparable like I did. So you either saw, yeah. you either always thought Diggs was better or you have considered the, their breaking point pretty vast. Yeah. Um, I forget what it was. It was like a two or three game stretch um, where Diggs was out in Minnesota and Thielen kind of just disappeared during that stretch and and that for me it put Diggs slightly higher than Thielen. Okay. Thielen's a very good wide receiver. Um I think he needs that compliment to um to stand out. Okay. I, I don't know if that was 2019 or 2018, but there there was a, a three game stretch where Diggs was out with an injury and I think it was um, I think it was 18 when Thielen started to slow down after that start. That was just devilish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right, Jason, number four for you. What do, do I dare I ask? <laughs> do you dare ask? Well, of Scotty course Miller. you can ask. Uh, DK Metcalf at number four. Uh, <laughs> yes, I like DK Met- Metcalf a lot. Uh, had the privilege of having this gentleman on fantasy on my team last year, and he never <laughs> disappointed. He never disappointed. The numbers that he was able to pull together, um, I was very, very impressed with. You know, coming out of college, uh, you know, everybody made a big deal about this dude. You remember the meme that kept going around yeah. social, you know, with his, how big this guy was? I mean, that's that's all you really knew and how well he did at the combine. But, um, you know, you mentioned it clean up some drops obviously there's a few things that he can work on but assuming that those things are being worked on as we speak uh he's definitely got the potential to uh to be in my top five for sure that was the the same time right after they drafted him where uh pete carroll took a shirt off when he met him <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so, it took that took some guts and i, I commend him for doing that because it's a very like for his case, probably grandpa thing to do, but it's like a dad thing to do. Yeah. It's just, that was <laughs> awesome. Yep. All right. Number four, I have Julio. Uh, I've long respected his game from afar. He doesn't score gobs of touchdowns like the uh, hall of famers do, but that won't disqualify him from the hall of fame. Uh, I love the stat that Wes has about 95 yards per game for his career. Think about that. He's been around since 2011. It's absolutely magnificent. Mm-hmm. And uh, yep. For it's, it's too bad for him. They were, within about an hour of a Super Bowl victory for that was snatched from them. Um, I'm kind of torn. The Titans like to run the football, so I don't really see a world where Derrick Henry turns into a footnote. Uh, I don't know how much production he'll have in terms of, you know, really lighting the world on fire. I think it'll be good enough for 900 yards, and maybe he'll get some touchdowns at this stop of the way. But to me, in terms of his uh, freakishness, uh, playing against him, uh, you know, I know he's going to do well when he plays the Vikings or whoever favorite team you might be. So with that uh, test that I use, uh, Julio is at number four for me. Uh, I'll go back up the snake here with Tyreek Hill at number three. I think the, uh, the top three here outside of what Jason comes up with are pretty ironclad for <laughs> the personnel. Uh, <laughs> Tyreek Hill is magnificent. Uh, I'll never quite know how much is a benefactor of playing with Mahomes, probably a bunch, but Hill would probably thrive with Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins, any of the the dudes that the world considers uh, mediocre. Uh, But Tyreek Hill has been around long enough that it's not a fluke. He is the the fastest man on the planet, at least in NFL speak. And he is my number three. Wes, who is yours? Um, Yeah, the the top three I juggled with a couple different times. Um, I actually started the list at one and went up from there and – one through three, I I wound up, you know, erasing and <laughs> putting a new name in a couple different times. Uh, number three for me, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, do it all wide receiver, no, no matter what team or who is throwing him the ball. Um, he was featured more in screens and underneath passes last year uh, in uh, Cliff Kingsbury's offense. Uh, he leads wide or he led wide wide receivers and 21 broken tackles uh, last year. Um, so he he's definitely showing his uh, run after the catch ability. Jason, hit us with your number three. My number three. Well, hopefully none of these three surprise anybody. I mean, Sean Hamilton. I, the Sean Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Sean Hamilton. <laughs> Uh, no, I got, uh, I got Devonte Adams at three. Um, you know, I mean, uh, what, what this guy did week in and week out and he obviously paired with Rogers. I mean, that that's a huge benefit there, but you know, I don't, I can't, I couldn't name another receiver on that Packers team. So, uh, you, you know, with me not having any vested interest in watching them play, um, or being fearful of playing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, ever um what he was able to come up with and, and produce with being from what i what i what i what i know anyway is the lone the lone wolf out there unless i mean i don't remember rogers spreading it around i mean a whole lot maybe he did i guess but yeah that guy wow what a year he had and then that's when i hear, always hear oh, but rogers doesn't have any weapons <laughs> just doesn't <laughs> but i won't go into that uh yeah. rogers rant and what i think of that but um, yeah, so I got him at three. Wes, who's your number two? 
Number two for me, the cheetah. Okay. Tyreek Hill. Um, he's arguably the best deep threat ever. Um, I still think Moss is, but um last year he had or in the last four years, uh fifty six catches. Uh, 2,240 yards, 25 TDs on targets of 20 plus yards, uh, which ranks second behind Moss. But uh, what he's doing uh, is just, it's phenomenal. Uh, having Mahomes chucking on the ball too, you know, won't hurt his stock at all. Um, yeah. Good. Good luck slowing him down. <laughs> deep, the deep threat dynamic between Moss and Tyreek Hill is so different. That's what always fascinates me is Moss was throw it up. He will jump right. and get it. And then he will outrun you once he comes back to the planet. And with Tyreek, it's that he will outrun you, let the ball come to him. Then he'll outrun you again. Right. Uh, not to say that Tyreek can't jump. I'm sure he can do that wonderfully. But, you know, he's 5'8", is it? Is it 5'10"? Yeah. Yeah. So, and so like jumping like Moss is re- not really part of his game. So, oh, yeah. You, but you've seen him do that in games where he didn't yeah. need to. He just did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've, it's always tricky for me to adjudicate the deep threat comparison between the two. I think one rocked the internet about a month ago when, uh, yeah, we talked about that when a PFF guy said that uh, Hill was already the best deep threat ever. Right. So to me, they're just, it, indeed, they're both deep threats, but Moss's was so different because, since then, there hasn't been a guy that just jumps to the roof to get it. So, gets two steps off the line and throws his hands up because he knows <laughs> he knows he's beat his man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two for me is DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, he took the uh, trip to the desert uh, for his career path, and then his buddy JJ Watt followed him. So they have the Arizona Texans now. Uh, but yeah, this one I struggled. Uh, it's probably no secret who my number one will be. Uh, these really these two could be interchangeable. Uh, but Hopkins is consistent enough. Uh, he's also had pretty darn good quarterbacking most of his career, uh, but it's Hopkins for me at number two. Uh, did you disclose your two already, Jason? No, but I, it's, it's D hop as well. Okay. Um, you know, I, I love that guy's game. I mean, he's gonna, you know, I, you got to assume that Kyler will, you know, like make that next step again here. I mean, he was good, decent last year. I mean, I think if, a lot some people anyway expected him to be better than he was um but i think uh you know it's it, like with all these young quarterbacks it's a learning curve and um i think uh yeah d hop is just he's got it all and that uh that's the number one and i did Devonte adams using my my silly test i couldn't i couldn't shake the connection of he and rogers at least from nightmares and the fact that he had 18 touchdowns. That means a lot for me because the year before the knock on him was that he didn't score touchdowns. He only had five. And I don't know if he heard that criticism probably and said, okay, cool. I'll score 18 and also have the same yardage chunk. Uh, so for now, and these will change. These all oh, the top three just seem to change from year to year. It's weird. Uh, but I will go Adams at number one, as much as that pains me to say it, Wes, who's your number one. Uh, same Devonte Adams. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, 18 touchdowns. Uh, he probably also would have led the league in catches if he didn't miss two games. Uh, 0.9 wins against replacement, which was best amongst wide receivers. Uh, he does it all. Um, you know, very solid wide receiver. And if I do a quick rundown of, of your test, Dustin, I, I would have to concur that Adams is, you know, the most fearful of the bunch uh, yeah. when paired, paired up with Rogers. And take us, take us out, Jason, number one. Well, you know, you guys have a division rival as your number one, I guess. So do I with Tyreek Hill coming in at number one. The guy's just <laughs> amazing. <laughs> what that, well, I mean, he's, it, it doesn't matter. We can't cover him. Nobody can cover him. I mean, <laughs> it, it guy's always open, um, you know, and if he's not open on his original route, I mean, he'll just, run fast to somewhere else and catch it and you'll be behind the defense constantly burning people guys just a electric never seen anything like it i don't think and and um I, and maybe i'm wrong here but i think w- w- when he came into the league was he returning he was returning kicks and stuff right yeah he'll still yeah. he'll still go back there every once in a while and do uh punts 
Yeah, he will. Uh, I remember just, you know, the first time I saw him, I think he was a young rookie. Obviously, he wasn't a starting receiver at this point in time, but they had him just returning kicks. And in the first look I had at him, I'm like, wow, this guy's going to be a threat. Um, So that's who I got at number one. And Michael Thomas did not make my list either. Oh, okay. So you you buy into the the slant only voodoo for him? (laughs) Well, yeah. I mean, you know, this guy, I... Uh, I just don't know what it's going to be such a different game. I'm envisioning down there in new Orleans, especially if Jameis is, is at the helm. I mean, you gotta, you gotta think that uh, Peyton is licking his chops. I mean, they're going to, they're going to open it up more, I think. Yeah. Right. I mean, they have to, um, and we'll see if, if, if Thomas can get used to doing things other than, you know, what he was used to from breeze. I think that's going to be huge. And, you know, he's, he was, you know, what was he? He was injured last year a little bit too, wasn't he? Yeah. Thomas? From almost all the, oh year. yeah. yeah well, that almost was, the whole year. Yeah, so that's I mean, why he wasn't, he would, I, there's no doubt in my mind, he would have been in the top two last year if we did these yeah. rankings. Cause I yeah. mean, he 160 catches or whatever it was yeah. in, in 2019. So, but, but again, though, still catching from breeze, same offense, yeah. same everything. And, and whether or not Peyton will keep the offense the same as he had with breeze, or if he will change it up a little bit with um, Winston, um, he may want to keep it the same just because of the talent they still have there. Yeah. Two so. things before we get off air for uh, just interesting points. So with right now we're, we're iffy on Jameis and the saints because he's not breeze. And we're, we're we get this grand experiment to see if Sean Payton's really the wizard offensively that everybody thinks he is. And that's fine and dandy, but with Winston, they're not getting a mediocre quarterback that has to, figure out if he's good enough. Like he puts up the numbers. It's one year he had a problem with interceptions and it was very yeah. weird. It's very weird. So Thomas is not going to be like, Oh, well, this, this quarterback isn't very like Jameis is going to get 4,000 yards and 25, 30 oh, yeah. tw- touchdowns. It's just a matter of whether or not he's smart enough to hold on to the ball and retain his job while doing so. So mm-hmm. I, I think that we have a lot of question marks about the saints and they are rooted in Jameis's, I guess, redevelopment as a, as a veteran, but he knows how to put up the numbers. So, so long as he can keep the turnovers under control, he's going to, you know, be a fantasy quarterback that you're, you're going to look at sideways because the numbers are going to be there. And oh, I agree. On uh, Tyreek. So he came out of the fifth round and he was that speed merchant and he ascended the depth chart to what Jason says is the best quarter, uh, best wide receiver in the league. And for me, it was number three. He's kind of, he set like this, this draft utopia for what teams have right. now when they take. So like, for instance, on all the, the fandom on this show right now, we have a KJ Osborne and then Jason has a KJ Hamler and they're both taken in the draft, not in the first round. And you kind of think, well, he's fast. He's going to return kicks. Maybe he'll blossom into something more. And we all think that because we have this example to point to with Tyree Hill. Nobody really ever comes close to matching that. But I think that's the dream scenario is that you get a speedster that opens up the, uh, the, uh, the offense for a team, uh, but nobody quite does it as good as Tyree Hill. But he kind of, every fan that sees speed in le- later rounds kind of has that nestled in their gut, like, God, maybe he'll be kind of like Tyree Jr. <laughs> oh, even the hype around rugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Wes, next week, unless you object, let's do, I don't know if anybody's going to care about tight ends or uh, maybe edge rushers, but let's do offenses top 15 okay. offenses. And then it, if it goes well and it flows nice, we can do defenses the following week. Um, anything else from you two gentlemen? No, getting back to Winston just for a second <laughs> though. I actually, you know, I think him sitting out for the year, I think that that benefited him a great deal. Um, got a chance to actually watch the game. Hopefully when he gets on the field this year, it's, sl- it's slowed down a little bit for him, but you're right. A dude is going to put up stats. Mm-hmm. Um, And it's going to be, I think, you know, as a, you know, if I was a Saints fan, I would be, I would be excited about it. I think it's going to look a little bit different than what it did with Breeze. Um, And that's, that's where my concern lies with Thomas. Um, You know, I'm not sure I've watched enough of his game to know what else he's capable of. Um, But there's no question Jameis is going to put up those stats. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I'd watch, like I said, uh, 25 minutes ago, I'd watch Thomas because, I sincerely believe that he thrived with what he was given because Breeze, for the most part, didn't throw the ball deep really in his career. Um, He made his Hall of Fame, you know, legendary career 
with medium range stuff. Nobody cared because he won a Super Bowl. And so he never got chided for uh, a non rocket arm. But yeah, I think Thomas, if he threw the ball deep, I don't think he'd just be like, oh, what do I do? I, no. think, I think he'd figure it out. So, oh, yeah. All right. Well, that's all we got for this edition. We'll be back with top 15 offenses and peace. Later. Adios. All right, gentlemen, take it easy. All right, man. Good night. Later. Take care.